So far, we've been able to develop an equilibrium expression and determine either the equilibrium constant or the missing equilibrium concentration. Sometimes, though, you might not have equilibrium concentrations available, so you'll need to calculate these by using the equilibrium constant, initial concentrations, and the stoichiometric coefficients of the balanced chemical equation. In this question, we're asked to find the equilibrium constant based on the initial concentration and final concentration of hydrogen iodide gas. The concentrations of the products are important in our calculation, but are not mentioned. An ICE table is a convenient way to organize the data. ICE stands for the row headers, initial, change, and equilibrium. That is, the initial concentrations of substances given in the question, the change in concentration of reactants and products, and the equilibrium concentrations when the reaction is finished. The top of the table shows the balanced chemical equation, with the reactants and products arranged as column headers for the rest of the data to fall beneath. The initial concentrations under each substance are usually provided in the question. We assume the initial concentrations of the products in this question are zero. That is, before the reaction begins, we only have reactants. If known, the equilibrium concentrations are added here. The difference in concentrations between the initial and final concentrations are added here. So far, all this table shows is information garnered from the question. Let's start to fill it in. Remember, the question is asking for the equilibrium constant, so our strategy is to find the equilibrium concentrations and apply them to the equilibrium expression. The first thing we can do is determine the difference in concentration of the hydrogen iodide gas from the beginning of the reaction to the point when the reaction reaches equilibrium. The change is negative 0.022 moles per liter. This means that from an initial concentration of 0.1 mole per liter of reactant, 0.022 mole per liter actually reacted. The concentration decreased, hence the minus sign. We use the molar ratios from the balanced equation to stoichiometrically determine the changes in concentration of the products. Only 1 mole per liter of hydrogen is produced per 2 moles per liter of hydrogen iodide. It isn't 2 moles per liter of hydrogen iodide we're talking about here, it's 0.022 moles per liter. So the concentration of hydrogen changes by 0.011 moles per liter, and since there was no hydrogen to start with, the change is obviously an increase, hence the plus sign. Iodine has the same stoichiometric coefficient as hydrogen, so its concentration increases by the same amount. Finally, by adding the initial concentrations of the changes in concentrations, we end up with the equilibrium concentrations of all the co compounds in the reaction. Now we can go about applying these concentrations to the equilibrium expression. Properly rounded, the equilibrium constant is approximately 0 0.200. Notice there are no units in the expression of the equilibrium constant. Here's another example. As we will see, this question is a little more math heavy. Be careful about the wording here. The reactants are expressed in moles and not moles per liter, and the equilibrium amount should be expressed in moles. You should plan your strategy. First off, you would create an ice table covering the initial reactant amounts to concentrations. Then complete the ice table to reveal the equilibrium concentrations. Since we have no indication of what any of the equilibrium concentrations are, we will say the change in molar concentrations of the reactants will be equal to x. After we apply our equilibrium concentrations to the equilibrium expression, we can solve for x and finally express these equilibrium concentrations as equilibrium amounts using the volume of the container. The amount of carbon monoxide is the same as the amount of water vapor in a 5 liter vessel. Each have a concentration of 0.2 moles per liter. The ice table shows the balanced chemical equation and the initial concentrations of the reactants and products.
As with the previous example, only reactants were added to the reaction vessel, and products are not assumed to exist. Now I'll add in the change in concentrations data. As the reactants react, their concentrations will decrease. As the products form, their concentrations will increase. Since the molar coefficients are all 1, the change in concentrations are all by a factor of 1x. It's worth digressing for a moment to imagine how things would look if the reaction vessel was applied with equal quantities of reactants and products before equilibrium was allowed to proceed. The changes to the initial concentrations would still occur by 1x, but since reactants and products were a part of the reaction mixture, to reach equilibrium, is it the reactants that still need to react to form more products, or do the products have to react to create more reactants? Before we had no products, so it was easy to predict the reaction would shift right. But here we have enough products present, and the reaction could potentially shift left. The size of the equilibrium constant is our clue. Since it is less than 1, albeit only just, we can assume the reaction will favor the reactants, and so here we'll shift left. The concentration of the products will drop as they react to form more reactants. Back to the original question. Now we'll apply these changes in concentrations to get an expression of the equilibrium concentrations. Next, we apply the equilibrium concentrations to the equilibrium expression. The original equation. The equilibrium expression. And like I said earlier, a little more math is needed here. Almost all of the expressions that end up like this can be conveniently square-rooted to eliminate half of those x's. What you do to one side of the expression, you must do to the other. So we square root both sides. Solving for x now becomes much more manageable. Finally, we'll apply this value for x, 0 0.09534, to the equilibrium concentration expressions we've derived in the ice table. So the concentrations of the reactants is 0 0.20 minus 0 0.09534. And the concentrations of the products are just 0 0.09534 moles per liter. Finally, to express the answer in amounts, that is moles, we use the volume of the reaction vessel. The amount of reactants at equilibrium to the correct number of significant digits is 0.5 moles. The equilibrium amounts of the products is 0.48 moles. Not a lot of difference between reactants and products, but we expected that by virtue of the equilibrium constant being so close to 1. What would happen if the equilibrium constant was significantly far from 1? I've already stated that the equilibrium constant greater than 10 to the power 10 confers such a high product to reactant ratio in the equilibrium expression that we just assume the reaction is quantitative. If the equilibrium constant becomes small enough, the forward reaction will be so slight that the change in concentration of the products can only be measured using a high degree of accuracy. As such, the decrease in the concentration of the reactants will be virtually undetectable. For example, a reaction having a very small equilibrium constant has reactant concentrations of, say, 0.065 moles per liter. As the reaction proceeds to equilibrium, products are formed. The concentration of the reactant decreases a little, and the concentration of the product increases a little. At the end of the day, however, when you try to express these equilibrium concentrations to the correct number of significant digits, the equilibrium concentration of the reactant is, for all intents and purposes, the same as the initial concentration. We call this the approximation method and is used in deriving equilibrium concentrations of the reactants when the K value is very small, so we can make this general statement. Use the approximation method to determine equilibrium concentrations of the reactants whenever the initial concentration of the reactants is a thousand times greater than K.